Intelligent autonomous robots aren't just science fiction anymore. They're already at work in industry today. Gartner predicts that one third of jobs will be replaced by software, smart machines, robots by 2025. But many see this as just creating new room for new jobs, new opportunities. What will all this mean for industry in general, and what are the overall benefits of smart robotics in manufacturing? What new knowledge and skills are required? And how will all this affect the maintenance of machinery in the future? Let's get some answers. Let's talk. Joining me to discuss uh, our topic of smart robotics and how they're revolutionizing industry are three guests. First, Professor Denitza Kragic from KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology, where she's a professor of computer science. Then we have Roberto Napioni, who is heading up SKF's new Global Machine Center of Excellence. Welcome. And Donia Vettling, who is head of product architecture at ABB Robotics. Welcome all. Let's start off with, we're calling this smart robotics. So, Denise, if we start with you, what's the difference between a robot and a smart robot? Mm -hmm. Well, smart robot is a smart robot. It has an extra, extra name to it. But the smartness comes from the fact that the robot is not necessarily pre-programmed for the um, um, certain set of tasks. Uh, it is equipped with sensors in the same way as we humans use our senses to interact with the environment, to detect dynamic uh, changes in the environment. Robots can also um, uh, add to their smartness by actually being able to adapt to the changing world. And Denitza, why is this moving so quickly these days? Because there was already talk of artificial intelligence way, way back in the 60s. So what's happening now? So uh, what we see, um, um, just from the technical side, uh, is that in parallel we have a uh, big development or um, uh, big changes, you know, moving on in terms of uh, developing machines that uh, are faster, that can, can move faster, that can um, uh, execute things faster, because we also have computers that are faster and can uh, do computations faster, but we also have, uh, let's say, the ability to store knowledge and to use knowledge in a different way than uh, we could do back in the 60s. So it, lots of things has to do with computation. And then the second thing that um, um, uh, is also developing are the sensors, right? We, we can sense and measure different um, um, properties of the environment uh, in a better way. And certain sectors are probably moving quicker than others. But um, how would you say, Roberto, in industry, it's been a little bit slower kind of uh, catching on. Why is that? Uh, in reality, uh, robots and automation are present since, since the 70s. But this was basically uh, for sequential job mm, uh, to reduce, let's say, heavy job. Um, now something is changing because we have, let's say, Industry 4.0, uh, which is coming. So there is an interest of the industry, uh, starting from automotive, to make uh, investment and to start again the discussion with the university, pushing, uh, let's say, more innovation. And you're heading up the Machine Center of Excellence at SKF. What is that? Uh, we've got the ownership to develop uh, the machine in a different way as today and to put again the focus on, 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 uh, on that. We have a new factory uh, that we call World Class Manufacturing in Gothenburg that we will we, we build very soon, in which all those concepts like use RFID, use of smart robots, traceability, um, ERP MES system integrated with the, with the line, high flexibility. Um, this will be put in the center to develop, and we are developing with the ABB as well. It's basically this is to show uh, what you're thinking. This is, a, let's say, a zero man area with the zero resetting. A robot is able to assemble the bearing with the different, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sequences, not the fixed fre frequency. Uh, and also change uh, the tooling and make the resetting in autonomous way. And this is based basically, the robot in itself is not enough. Uh, we have to basically integrate everything in, in our SKF Smartify industry, in which we have to collect all the information in this big data environment 
And Donia, what would you say? Where have you seen the big changes in the last decade? How how has this evolved? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you, you could uh, you could start. I mean, if you start looking at the market view, I mean, one thing is for is that the the, the market for industrial robots has grown a lot uh, in the last decade. The second thing with the market is basically you see a footprint change, going from uh, China being a market of a couple of hundred robots per year to being the, actually the biggest uh, market in, in the world today for, for industrial robots then. A second thing that's, that's changing now and actually driving this technology development and or the pace of, of, of development uh, is the fact that the, the R&D investment in robotics technology that's increasing a lot. And it's not driven by the industrial robotics industry, it, it's more driven by the automotive industry, the, the, the large IT companies and public funding and so on. The last thing is trend around collaborative robots then. So you want robots that's actually working next to human beings so that you can benefit from, from the cognitive uh, capability of human beings together with letting the robot do the heavy lifting and all these tasks that you don't want humans to do. Daniel, sorry yeah. if I uh, yeah. but, but say to do that, but we, we need to completely review how it could be the safety. Uh, because in the shop floor, let's say, if you want to have this collaborative, uh, let's say, uh, human robot in interactions, basically, we cannot put any more, let's say, robot in the safe cage and then to, to have this, how, how you can uh, treat those those kind of uh, topics. You can also uh, already in at the hardware level make sure that whenever there is a contact, unexpected contact with the environment or with the user or something like that, the robot stops moving. Yeah. I would say that that's kind of like the basic thing that we would all, uh, already look at and it's not based on some external sensing, it's based on the internal sensing. So you feel it with your body in the same way as humans do. And then there are other aspects of safety. It's how can we use normal human interaction with the robot in order to also address the safety issue. So how can we talk to a robot to use a dialogue, instruct the robot by, by natural, uh, by speaking to it, for example, and then also uh, uh, accepting that maybe human workers will also need to have some sensing on them, which is, I mean, variable. You know, it can be in your clothes and so on. Yeah. So by, by actually integrating or, or, or having really the whole connected company where both the human workers and robot workers are connected kind of like in a network and the information is very easy to, to, to actually uh, uh, exchange. That's very, very good, good news because we can think to have to build less infrastructure in the yeah, factory exactly. uh, to a less cost of installation. That's, uh, so important. one needs to look into the, the distributed sensing. You can't expect exactly. to have one camera looking into all robots. You need to accept that humans will be also wearing some sensing in the same way as robots exactly. do that. You also need to, to have a safety certification cost yeah. that's reasonable for yeah. the company. Yeah. So I think that's, um, that's, that's another so aspect of it. Do you have kind of any concrete examples of really smart innovations that are out there at work in industry today? If we should, should take something that's, that's uh, a bit connected to Internet of Things and so on. So, so in ABB we have something called remote service. And so we have 5,000 robots to get today that's connected wirelessly to the cloud. And then we have a center of, with, with the data analytics in, in Bangalore, in India, who can uh, who analyze the data from these robots. And basically by doing this, you can decrease the, the, the unplanned stops of your production line of the robots by up to 50%. Then. And that's obviously a big benefit. I was going to say, ask all of you, what are the overall benefits of uh, the adoption of smart robotics within industry? If we start uh, with you, Roberto. One is the maintenance. Hmm? maintenance efficiency, so using uh, all those data and the, let's say, robot and, let's say, machine activity, we should reduce maintenance, as uh, Daniel said, uh, which is one of the most sensitive costs and is also a source of instability of the production. And by that, we, we can, we can uh, recover, so making more uptime uh, available. Uh, second is the, let's say, operational efficiency. So by those systems, uh, we can really see all the supply chain uh, and the cost for each operation, and we can control that. So the, the big data that are available, if used in, in, with the right algorithm to make interment, enable to really reduce the cost of operation, for example, reduce logistic cost. For example, to reduce, let's say, uh, transport costs, not only the productivity in, in itself, 
but also the productivity for sure. Then we have, let's say, the information efficiency, um, which is basically how we are using those uh, big data and the real time, because the, the big advantage is the take decision, uh, let's say, using real time data. And then we have the energy uh, efficiency, which today is not so much considered, but I believe in the, in the robot, in the machine, in the factory of the future, this will be, become more and more important. So this is one of the future thematic for, for designing new machine, because for sure we need to start to think, to design machine, uh, considering all those things and not only consider the actual machine as is and to transform. The um, um, idea has always been that the robots will take over the 3D, dirty, dull and dangerous uh, jobs. And I think that that's still kind of like the dream. But w what I think is interesting is that now with uh, all other services, you know, like with new materials also, with the way of how we can process the data fast and so on, I think that we will be seeing applications that we do not necessarily can envision yet today, just because there will be like infrastructural change, not only in industrial setups, but also there will be uh, infrastructural change in the society. And what do you say, Don, as the overall benefits from your perspective? Yeah, if, I, if, if I take an industrial robot-centric view, then I mean, uh, the, the first thing I would mention is to decrease the engineering cost because the, the, the product cost in itself, we worked a lot with that. And also, if you can, can get the ease of use down, you can actually decrease the, the, the kind of competence level you need to handle the robot because often with small companies, it might not be the investment cost in itself that's blocking the investment. It's actually that you need to hire a new person and that's a big risk for the company then. Another thing that's, that's quite clear is that productivity, that's everything for our customers. So the, the, the reliability of the products as such has been going up at the, at the same time. When you're looking over three generations of the same product, when you increase the mean time between failure by a factor of 10. So the question obviously on everyone's mind is, will many jobs become obsolete? I'm thinking out on the factory floor. What will this transformation mean, Danica? I think it's very difficult to predict whether there will be, let's say, enough new jobs or whether we will actually um, uh, reach a level of where we will not be needing so much, let's say, manpower or work anymore, but still economically not deteriorate the, the, the wellness in the society because we will have lots of robots producing uh, both the goods, but also um, 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 uh, delivering services uh, instead of humans. Korea is, is the country in which uh, we have the high density of robots, more or less, 400 robots each 10,000 of employees. So if we say in that way that the, the unemployment rate, which is done in that way, so basically it's not changing, and we analyze the trend of the robot sales, we can say that there is not direct uh, relation with unemployment and uh, robot use, probably we will see, let's say, factory with less workers, maybe much more maintenance engineer, and more people working in the system, more people working in the software, more people working in internet, uh, building the condition uh, to run uh, this, uh, this kind of change. My, my view is basically that, that jobs, uh, robots create jobs, and it actually creates better jobs and referring to the 3Ds basically, I mean, you, you're moving people out of the dangerous jobs and, and giving them better jobs. And Roberto, what do you see if we talk specifically about product developers and, and maintenance engineers, how do you see their role transforming in this? Yeah, uh, for the product developer, for sure, uh, the connection with the PLM, the product lifecycle management is a great opportunity uh, to change the lead time, to reduce the testing cost, and to also to have uh, increase the rate of success in, in, in developing the product. Um, this for sure will happen, but, for, but we need to integrate the PLM uh, in, in the global system. So basically, when you from, from the, the drawing till to the launch of the product in the time to market can move from, I don't know, from months to hours, uh, till to integrate, the PLM to the CNC of the machine in a few hours and to design automatically the tooling. That is what we are aiming to have very soon. I believe that uh, the maintenance engineer job will change completely. And then maybe we can 
see some uh, example. This is uh, like the robot can change a chuck, which is one of uh, the, the boring and log, uh, longest operation you can then do during the maintenance. And the robot is changing the chuck automatically. Second is to integrate and sensorize the machine. Is like we want to do in our smart defining industry. Basically, it's correlate the machine and uh, let's say sensorize the machine. We have to consider the machine plus the robot huh? all together working in, in the same environment. And the robot can make maintenance exactly in the right time, but much, much before the failures. If I continue of, 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 of that team, I mean, basically what, what, what you're providing the maintenance engineers with, with, with these analytics and, and uh, tools and so on is yeah. actionable data. So, so when they go out on the floor to fix something, they will in most cases know what to fix. So, so from that aspect, I think it will actually become easier to some sense because the whole uh, error searching process that will be, be, be less cumbersome. And that's quite often, I think, taking a large portion of, 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 of the work. Uh, at the same time, of course, the, the, the competence need for the maintenance engineers will change. It will be more software. It will be more electronics that's coming in. And at the same time, you need to be able to fix the mechanics, of course. So. Exactly, because uh, to me, I continue to say that also mechanic uh, is important because it has to be smart as well. Easy, I would say easy. Well, what, what we see here is you having a robot doing the maintenance. Of course, you're, you need to interact more between the machine design and the robot design. And, and I think uh, the, the interaction between our customers and us, li like with, with SKF, then it will be extremely important in the development phase and understanding where you're going so we can design our products in, in, in the right way. And you've talked about the, the new skills and competences that, that are needed. So, Denitza, how integral will education be in this? What I think is interesting is uh, then how, uh, how we can implement, for example, more project work from, from early years on in the edu education so that students get to work with real problems that, that, for example, industry is facing. That's one thing. It will also require different type of education for the engineers that have already been active, maybe for a decade or two in industry. They should actually come back and uh, potentially get uh, uh, further educated with the new tools, maybe that will be available from, from machine learning, as you said, but also the interaction between students that have not had any industrial experience yet with those that have been active maybe for two, 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 two decades is actually going to change also what is the role of a teacher because we will need to become more, more of the knowledge mediators, right, and try to see uh, and help to that, that the knowledge gets uh, exchanged. And if we talk a little bit about, about life cycle, Roberto, yeah. if, if we think about cost, I, is yeah. this cost effective to invest in these robots? Yeah, it is a cost effective if we, uh, let's say, consider the total cost. If running the machine it, it at always at the optimum level can bring, let's say, uh, advantages in terms of cost. If we evaluate this total cost of ownership for all, all the, uh, let's say, life of the machine, I would say this is benefit. And how do you see the bu this business model kind of evolving I in the coming years? I think the, the new business models that will come up here will be closely related to services. Providing services for for example, to do energy uh, optimization of the factory, to, yes. to optimize your producti productivity a bit more. Or if your factory can run slower because the demand is lower, then you optimize it to, to have as little wear as possible on your equipment because that's your priority at the moment. So. so if we look ahead, maybe 10 years down the road then, we've talked a lot about where we are now. Roberto, how do you see the, the factory of the future? Uh, I would say, uh, with use of machine totally sensorized with with the cyber physical systems or whatever, totally controlled with uh, with uh, one global system, MES or whatever. But uh, to me, also let's say with the more attention than today on the workplace. So, factor of the future should be and will be more attractive for the people. Donia, what are your predictions? First of all, of course, we will still have this traditional robotics manipulator. I think they will still exist. It will still have a, have a, have a place. 
Uh, and looking at the manipulator side, I mean, they, they will be, be uh, combined with more types of collaborative robots. I think that's, that's also quite clear. And of course, if you're looking at the whole factory systems, you will have a lot of mobile robots running the logistics and, and, and so on. And uh, all these robots will be connected. I think that's uh, that's clear, and there will be more sensors on, on them than you have today. And by having these sensors and, and the connectivity, we will have more data. So you can apply uh, different types of data analytics and, and machine learning and so on. I hope that uh, this will be like the, the workplace of the future, still having humans and then uh, robots being there as a third or fourth hand. Because one of the big challenges that we are facing today is actually flexible um, uh, manipulation and interaction with small objects where you actually uh, have humans interacting with small parts. Uh, and, and also flexible kind of parts, right? Where we cannot build robots that resemble our hands and also the dexterity of the hands. That's still a challenge. Maybe in 10 years will not be a challenge anymore, but right now it is actually a big challenge. So, so building, building um, uh, very dexterous hands. Or maybe we can also think about robot being used as an educator. So you can have the robot reading to you or explaining to you certain things. And while you're doing something that is very mechanical, you can be actually listening to things and learning about things in the same way as you would be reading a book or something like that. Well, thank you very much. It'll be interesting to see where this all leads. Very exciting. I want to thank all of our guests today, Professor Danica Kragic, Roberta Napione, and Donia Weppling. This has been a great discussion. We want you out there to keep that discussion going. That's what Let's Talk is all about. We want you to share knowledge and spark conversations. So do just that. Go out on social media using the hashtag Let's Talk Smart Robotics. Thanks for watching.